so uh, I'm going to start. So I'm Daniel Xertier, and I work at Thales Corporate Engineering, uh, which is this uh, transversal entity in Thales that provides expertise, solutions, and support to the, to the Thales uh, units to develop their systems and uh, to, to produce the system and deliver their systems. Uh, Stéphane Bonnet was supposed to be here to, to do a demo of the, the, the tooling, but uh, he, he was not able to come, so I will present some videos instead, so I'll try to do that at least. So I'm in charge of the mod uh, model-driven engineering domain in uh, Thales Corporate Engineering, and we've, uh, in Thales we've developed a uh, model-driven engineering method and uh, its com accompanying tool, Capella, a few, ex few years ago. And we are about to publish the method and standardize the method and um, open source the, the solution that is built on top of uh, Eclipse. So we'll present all this and uh, explain why and uh, we, we define, uh, develop this uh, solution and uh, what it brings. So first, a few official slides of Thales. I won't present these, of course, in details, but uh, just to, to show here that, uh, in fact, we are uh, we are a company that uh, provides a, that address a dual market, both defense and civil, and it's quite balanced. And uh, more precisely, the, ma the dual markets that are addressed are aerospace, space, ground transportation, defense, security. And even more precisely, the, the kind of uh, system that we deliver, you can find them here. Uh, they are plentiful and in fact, uh, they go from a very large systems of systems down to uh, equipments. But what they have in common is that they are all very complex and uh, they are all uh, critical. And in fact, uh, they are all, uh, the, the tendency is to produce more and more complex system and uh, complex that are more and more critical. But also the other trend is that we have to produce them at, let's say, more and more restrained costs. Uh, and uh, so considering that, we, we, we identified a few years ago that we definitely had to uh, perform the uh, transformation of uh, engineering in Thales to keep pace with these trends. So we've decided, uh, analyzing how we can transform the, our engineering activities inside Thales, we, we, we identified that model-driven engineering was key. But once this is stated, the problem we, we also uh, saw at that time is that model-driven engineering, but also modeling, uh, at large, Interes was very, uh, at least or elsewhere, was very slow and painful to deploy. Uh, some reasons were given at the talk before, but uh, they, there are a lot of reasons, but uh, they can some, be summed up in uh, those two reasons. The first one is that the, at that time, and uh, even now, for some of them, the, uh, the, the cuts has not adapted to our industrial needs. Uh, the, our engineers are very reluctant to, to use them to develop their, their systems uh, because they, they do not, uh, they, they do not f meet the operational needs. And also, uh, the, the dependency to tool vendor was, not, was too constraining in the sense that uh, we, we have not the ability to have a, sh a strong influence on their roadmap for them to produce the tools that would meet our needs. So we've decided to, um, to, to define a new method, Arcadia, and uh, the, the model-driven engineering tool in support to this me method uh, at that time. And uh, those, these uh, solutions are really uh, dedicated to uh, our own business. So the, the idea was to specify, design, and develop them from the operational needs and with our uh, operational uh, uh, engineers. So the, the main drivers that, uh, that uh, we were uh, taken into account while building these uh, this, uh, mm -hmm. solutions were that it should allow uh, to produce system with a better quality because uh, non-quality non costs are very, uh, are very, uh, uh, are, uh, um, very expensive to, to, to manage. We also have to have a better productivity of engineering activity, even also to reduce our costs. And the tooling must be easy to use. When you, we say easy to use, it's not that we have to, to deliver simple, simple tools, 
but the tools that are adapted to the need, meaning that they, they speak the, the language of the, the engineers, but also produce, uh, provide a set of tools that, that will uh, automate, it, automate things according to the methodology and uh, that will ease their life uh, uh, during the, the, their engineering activities. So also early validation, it should provide the, the, the means to validate the, the model, the architecture uh, upstream, meaning that at, uh, in uh, the development life cycle, as soon as the development phase, before implementation, integration, verification, validation, because the, the cost of refactoring was uh, are, are too, too high. So it, of course it should be integrated, seamless, coherent, and trustable. All the information inside the, the, the architecture, the, the, the engineering artifacts should be that way. We also should provide the capability to capitalize the best practice and know of our experts, because when once capitalized, it should be an available in catalogs. It can be re reused by other, other engineers that are not necessarily experts in uh, any domain. It should be performing, of course, and scalable uh, to be compliant with uh, the requirement management, uh, the um, configuration management requirements, and also provide the capability to uh, collaborate on the same on the same model. So, while building building uh, these tools, we consider three main axes that that are addressed by the method and supported by the tool. The first one is that. It should allow all the stakeholders to, to uh, work on the same reference, on the same architecture reference. Of course, the development teams with the, ar uh, the, the architects, the, the, the engineers, but also uh, the specialty engineers here for addressing uh, specialty engineering such as performance, safety, interface management, risk assessment, costs, and, and so on. But also the IVV team because we, we validate the model early in the phase, but we can provide information for the IVV uh, activities also. And also all the other support uh, services here and, and uh, the customer of also, of course. Second, we, we must master the complexity. So the idea is to provide a multi-level engineering and uh, this is uh, detailed in the method and supported in the tool with the, the, the ability to concentrate on specific concerns at each level. Here, for example, for first level is the operational lean analysis. Then the system is a white box, uh, black box here, but we perform the f functional analysis here. We define then a, f a logical architecture of the, of the system to be de developed, allocating function here to the, to the logical component, not taking into account all the non-functional constraints here, but then uh, uh, make, make the architecture concrete here uh, in the physical level here with uh, assemblies, deployments, and so on. All this information is integrated, traceable, traceable and, and so on. And the, the tooling, uh, so, sorry, the tooling, in fact, ensures that the, the information uh, entered in the model, edited in the model, conforms the, what is defined in the method. Then, of course, the early validation. This is done through uh, integrated viewpoints that we, we call viewpoint in, uh, in the method and uh, in the tool. So uh, the architect here has his le level, one of the level we, we, we've seen before, and uh, there he, he, he defined the architecture. But it's so he, he should, uh, he, he must validate the architecture during the development cycle here uh, with, uh, with uh, different concerns, safety, for example. So by uh, adding some information dedicated to safety, it will validate the, the architecture uh, so that it is compliant with uh, safety uh, non-functional uh, constraints. What is true for a particular specialty is also true for the other ones. So for a system, uh, the archi its architecture here should be uh, validated against all the non-functional concerns that are uh, defined in, uh, for, for the system here. And of course, also the cost uh, because we have to reduce cost. Uh, this should be um, a specific viewpoint for that. So the architecture will be uh, validated in a short decision loop before, once again, the implementation, integration, verification, validation. 
and then mastering the transition. This, this means that the, 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 the method defines exactly how the information is related from one level to another, and the tooling, because there are rules defined in the method, uh, the, the tools can assist in the, the, the management of the transition of the information and the coherency of the whole here. What is true for a specific uh, system level is also true for the different levels of the system here, going from one level to another here by uh, transforming, for example, uh, uh, in a system here, a, a specific part that is a subsystem uh, that will be developed again with Arcadia and Capella. So uh, um, the answer to that is uh, Capella that will be uh, proposed as an open source project in, uh, in the Polarsys Industry Working Group in the very near future, it's a question of days. And I will try to do a demo through videos, sorry. So first, uh, be, be befo before opening uh, the, the tool through the video, uh, there, are some, uh, the, the, there is a graphical charter that will allow you probably to understand better the, the, the graphics. What is green is about functions, what is blue about components, and pink about the interfaces. In fact, uh, there is also yellow that you will see, but it's more node components, uh, so it's uh, a kind of blue. So there are several uh, there are several types of uh, of tools. So I will show I will show uh, a certain number of them. So they are, they have all th this kind of tools have all been des designed and developed uh, uh, from operational needs. So the, the the first one is a very basic one for for Capella, but it's usually not provided in tools. So when you open the, the when you work on a, on a Capella uh, model, you will uh, access to the information through uh, uh, what we call a methodological browser. It's not the traditional model tree uh, browser. And so when you open a, a project here, you will find the different engineering phases defined by Arcadia and implemented in Capella here. And according to the to the, um, the phase you you want uh, you you address uh, during your engineering activities, you will be able to access the information through the different engineering uh, activities that are uh, allocated to this uh, particular engineering phase. So you can, uh, for a specific uh, activity, you can access to all the information that are have been already edited through diagrams here. And for example, you can access to uh, some missions here that have been defined for the system. The mission uh, that are performed through the, the exploitation of certain capabilities of the system, uh, which uh, so with some of them interacting with uh, the actors, the uh, interacting actors of the system. So you can still edit the uh, com complete the edition through the, the palette here that is dedicated to the engineering activities. There is no UML CML here; it's only mission capabilities and so on. So, of course, you can also create new, new, new information here. For example, there is a traceability matrix here that can be built from the, the transformation from one level to another here. But you can also, for example, uh, trace a specific refined uh, logical function here th with a, a system function above uh, through this kind of uh, specific representation of the model. So it's on not only graphical, but also table edition. In terms of uh, guidance, there is also, uh, f at, at for each uh, activity, engineering activity, there are some hints that refer to the, to the method, but also that uh, explain how to use uh, the, the, the tooling in a proper way so that you, you, have, you maximize the, the engineering product, your engineering productivity. And finally, again, in terms of guidance, uh, we provide the capability to de define some document, dedicated document that allows to read uh, efficiently the model. We, we call it a reading path. Efficiently the model for certain uh, concerns uh, through the explanation of what is in the model and uh, then uh, hot links here to access to the information, the, the, the specific diagrams here. Okay, another set of tools is the set of tools that allows to manage the complexity of the, of the system, of the model. So, uh, they, in fact, uh, one, 
uh, one key driver of uh, the, the building of Capella is that uh, it allows you to manage the information, not necessarily the information that is uh, entered in a model, it can be uh, other information. So first, uh, in a specific diagram here, you can, uh, according to the concern you, you, you address during your engineering activities, you can collapse, hide information so that you have only the relevant information accessible for your analysis of the model so that, that you can understand and uh, make the, the model evolve. So I'll let him play a, a bit uh, with this. So there is yellow here. Right. Okay, and then, uh, yeah. so another uh, way of uh, mastering the complexity is that you, you don't, do not necessarily need to enter all the information, for example, in UML, if you have a, a, um, um, an exchange between those two uh, blocks here, about this is function in terms of uh, Arcadia and Capella, you'll have to define the interaction between the, the upper pa parent uh, blocks here with the ports and the delegation of ports and, uh, and the delegation of uh, exchanges here. You only have to, when you refine the functions here, to take the port to drag and drop and put it on the underlying function. And all the, the delegation is understood and managed by, by the, the tool. So for example, if you uh, want to, uh, in a specific diagram, uh, expose only the, the parent functions here, you will still have all the exchanges of the uh, child functions uh, that are explained here. This is interpreted by the tool and, ma and managed in a, in a diagram. But the, this is not, this does not refer to a specific uh, uh, exchange between those two functions here. This kind of uh, ma management of the graphical information with abstractions is very, very powerful and uh, allows to minimize the, the modeling edition for our engineers. So at the end, when you, you display all the functions, then you will uh, get back the, this ki the, the kind of diagrams here. Another kind, uh, I'll let him finish. Another kind of, um, of abstraction is the fact that uh, when you have a very complex architecture, there is, there is at the end, a lot of exchanges between, between the, the blocks in the, here, the functions or the components. And you, we provide the capability to regroup uh, information so that, and uh, display it uh, uh, regrouped, so as to simplify the, the, the representation for a specific concern for the customer, for example. Okay, so far. So uh, there are other kinds of tools that we call productivity tool. Here we will see in the first uh, video how the, um, the transition is managed by the tool automatically. So here we have uh, an extract, very simple one, uh, of the system here, at the, at the, of the model at the system level, with the, the system being a black box here with two functions. And by, uh, by refining it at the lo logical level, we define two components here where the, the two functions are allocated to the diff two different components. We also have a defined a scenario here, a representative to the, uh, of the, the, the behavior of the system uh, at system level. And so we have to refine this scenario at logical level here. So the tooling, because uh, it, it knows exactly how the information is related from one level to another, the tooling can deduce a lot of things when applying a uh, the, the, tr the automated transformation from one level to another here. So we will launch the transformation of the scenario. The scenario appears somewhere here, here. And you will see the scenario that has been initialized by the, the transformation tool. We can re rename it. So we, if we see the, the scenario then, the scenarios, so you can see that the system here it doesn't uh, exist as a black box at logical level. There are two components here. And so the, all the exchange of information will be maintained here uh, accordingly. So afterwards, you can complete the information so that the, the information is refined at the logical level according to the logical level concerns. What must be said that is this transformation is iterative, meaning that if you add some exchanges here at the second iteration, or, re, or, or delete or modify something, then the modification will be propagated without 
uh, modifying the information that has been uh, added afterwards. Then uh, this is a small part of the capitalization of know-how. We have the capability from a, a, a specific model to define uh, what we, we want uh, to define, in fact, um, uh, a kind of pattern here, uh, sender receiver pattern in a catalog. In fact, it's not a really a pattern because there is no roles, but we also uh, support uh, full-fledged pa patterns with roles, of course. So the, the idea is to, uh, to put uh, this kind of construct in a li library that can be used in another m system here, and uh, we can uh, uh, instantiate th this uh, pattern here uh, at any place in the model. Here we, we choose to, to instantiate it twice. So let me do it. So if it's a complicated architecture pattern, then it will be reused by the, the new buy. Okay, so here we see the two instances. But we also manage the, the, um, the evolution of the, of the pattern. So meaning that if we add uh, some exchange between the functions, for example, an acknowledgement between the receiver and the sender, we can also choose to uh, propagate this evolution of the new version of the, this pattern to all the instances that have been uh, done in, uh, in a model. So that the, 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 the know-how is uh, updated. Here we go. Okay, next uh, thing. No, that's it. Then, uh, what time is it? Okay. Uh, model analysis and navigation. So we have the we provide the capability to very easily navigate across the model uh, n without knowing where the the, the information is uh, is maintained in the model. So when you have this. Uh, decomposition icon here, you can navigate in, um, in depth in, um, in the model, so with uh, zoom in and zoom out. So uh, I've done it on the device. Okay. So that you, you can access the, the, the more detailed information, refined information uh, more easily. We have also another kind of browser. We, I spoke about the methodological browser. So here we have a semantical browser that uh, displays wh whatever element is selected here. It shows the, the, the referencing element, the element that reference the, the selected uh, element, but also the elements that are referenced by the element and some uh, information, other elements that are related in terms of uh, uh, semantic uh, or, or sem semantics or syntax. Here, for example, it shows us also the diagrams where the element is, uh, is uh, shown. So for example, we've navigated to another diagram where the, the function is uh, shown here, just a, a, a diagram that uh, produces uh, and shows exchanges between function. And we have also um, accelerators here to find the information inside diagrams. Just typing some characters, it will show the proper things. And for example, to, to show how fast you can get to the proper information here. You, if you want to access the data that is exchanged on the seconds uh, message here, just click on the seconds message. Then it, w it will show all the, the elements. So you, you select the, the data here, the diagram where it is displayed, and you can find back the, where the, the data is, um, is defined. About model, model validation, you can choose to uh, launch, well, uh, the, the, the model will be con well constructed sy syntactically uh, due to the fact that there is a meta model uh, behind. But uh, the, the, the Capella uh, tool also implements all the engineering rules, validation rules that, are def that is defined by the, 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 the method. So you can launch for any element a model validation here that will check all the, 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 the engineering rules uh, defined in, uh, in Capella. And so when there are problems detected, they, they are shown here, and they, ca they can be sorted according to different uh, criteria. The most used, of course, is to uh, about the, the severity criteria to access first to the errors rather than uh, warnings. And, so on. and when you, there is an error, because there are rules 
uh, defined in, in a method and uh, implemented in tool, you can access to quick fixes so that the tool can fix the, the errors by, by itself. You can choose to, to do it by, by, uh, by yourself, but the, the tool helps you to do it automatically. So the function is realized by the component. The function is uh, displayed here, but it will be now realized by the, the per components. OK, and the uh, last uh, example of a productivity tool. When you delete an element from the model, not from the diagram, there is an impact analyzer that shows all underlying elements that are also uh, deleted. And uh, when selected one of them, uh, you can uh, see uh, what the impact of the deletion will be in terms of uh, elements that are related to the to element that will be deleted. And lastly, the, the viewpoint in Capella at work. So here there is an example of a, an extract of an architecture that shows the primary, primary parameters of a, an aircraft to the crew here. So because this is critical information that is to be given to the crew, uh, for safety reasons, the architecture has a duplication uh, pattern applied. So we will analyze this uh, architecture part in terms of safety and performance. So in terms of safety, what we ca the, the viewpoint uh, enables to add here uh, to, to simulate the, the loss of uh, a failure, in fact, in a component here. So if we apply it on this component here, we, we, we can simulate the propagation of the failure here. So if this component is down, then the function here to display the, the information to the crew will not be delivered, but due to the duplication, the crew will still be informed. But if we analyze the same architecture in terms of performance, uh, this, is, this information is added when you select the, the viewpoint. You have additional uh, information that you can enter in the palette here, but there is also uh, layers of information graphically that can be added to, to display this kind of uh, additional information here. So if we um, analyze the architecture in terms of performance here, we can see that uh, here there is a, a problem due to the fact that uh, this uh, function here requires some uh, capability uh, that the component underlying, uh, on which it is allocated cannot uh, pro provide. But because we know that this component here uh, is very powerful, we can just allocate the information to the other one and so that the architecture is good in terms of performance. But of course, if we analyze it again in terms of safety, we can see that if this component is down, then the crew will not be uh, informed anymore. So there is also a video for another kind of um, analyze in terms of uh, viewpoint. So with uh, basic mass, performance, and price, I will just go a bit faster here. So we can analyze the, can analyze the different aspects. But uh, to, for trade-off analysis, we have this kind of uh, uh, trade-off uh, infrastructure here that allows each viewpoint to provide metrics in terms of uh, quality of the architecture for specific concerns. Concern provide metrics that are, are computed in terms of uh, synthesis here, uh, synthesis of the quality of the architecture co uh, compared to the uh, different uh, concerned concerns. So here, for example, the, the architecture is, is good uh, in terms of performance, but not in terms of price and mass. And so by adjusting and uh, making the, the so short decisions in terms of short, uh, short decision loops, we can at, at last reach a good architecture here. Right, that was the end of the video. But there are a, a lot of other tools that have, de have been defined by the, by the um, operational users, operational engineers in, in Teles, that will help you. The, this, in fact, ecosystem of tools are complex as, as such, but uh, in fact, uh, once the engineer can uh, enter the information in the tool using his own language. He can use all these tools to, uh, <coughs> in fact, uh, have a leverage to uh, do it, to, to model the information uh, with more productivity. So this is, uh, this is really used at a, a, a daily, daily way in a, in, um, in a different project. So, Capella and Arcadia have been, de de uh, have been uh, deployed uh, in uh, the Thales group. 
So there, it has been developed in different kinds of, uh, of systems. So from a very large uh, critical information system down to embedded systems here. Across the different units of Thales and across the different countries here. In fact, Stefan that uh, was supposed to do the demo is, uh, is in Australia for one month to help uh, deploying uh, Arcadia and Melody in uh, the units over there. And in fact, what uh, was it in, is interesting to say here is that, uh, in fact, Arcadia and, uh, and Capella are not used as a whole in uh, the project. Usually, it can uh, be used uh, according to different concerns, for example, to, to, uh, to analyze uh, uh, only a part of the architecture that is critical uh, in terms of functionality or in terms of uh, performance and so on. But also as a whole, of course, for bid and pr uh, for bids also, answers to bids, for uh, document pro documentation uh, ge generation, but, uh, production, also for interface uh, skeleton productions and so on. But what's interesting is that uh, all the, the, um, the Thales engineer now speak the same, the same language in terms of engineering activities. And so now it's very easy to, uh, to gather them in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Thales uh, corporate engineering and to define uh, transversal uh, viewpoints that will be used across Thales so the, the, the same understanding of the engineering activities pro propagate. Thank you. So uh, at last, we, what I can say is that Thales uh, was very well prepared to the open sourcing of Capella because uh, we, we've done uh, a kind of uh, open sourcing strategy uh, by phases. So we started with phase one where we uh, was an, act, uh, an active uh, actor of the, uh, the definition and creation of the policies working group in Eclipse. And then from there, we, we, we've open sourced some underlying components here that was uh, enabling components for doing uh, such environments such as Capella. And then the second phase was to produce all the, the, the technical infrastructure and to, uh, to open source all the technical infrastructure of, uh, of uh, an environment such as Capella. And, to pr to pr and also the integrated environment, which is called Kitalfa, and which is also already a, um, a Polaris uh, project. We've open source additional comp uh, technical components, including Sirius, with, uh, that we've uh, open sourced with uh, OBO. So all, all this environment can be used for Capella, but also for other kinds of uh, environments such as Capella to produce uh, DSLs and uh, things like that. And now we are ready to uh, open source Capella, and we, this, this will be, we've already started uh, preliminary works, but we will uh, propose a, a policies project in, uh, in a few days. Well, 